We made, we made Claire's, Claire's Gato Bosk, <laughs> and we're going to show you how. Yeah. There's some recipes that are just pastry cream, some recipes that are apparently just cherry compote. We're going to do it a little mix and match. A little mix and match. And a little bit for you and a little bit for her. Or him. Or them. Or them. Gato Bosk. Now we're going to show you the ingredients we need for my favorite part, the pastry cream. Whole milk, a little bit of salt, some corn starch, some sugar, some... Butter. Unsalted butter, five egg yolks, and some vanilla bean. Since we have all the ingredients for the pastry cream out, and it does take four hours to chill after you're done making it, That's right. we're gonna make the pastry cream first. Yes. Out to the stand mixer. We don't need the, we don't need the stand mixer. <laughs> Two cups of whole milk. Now you're gonna use half of a vanilla pod. Mm. You've never seen this? Mm -mm. Oh, that's cool. So that's a vanilla bean. That's vanilla bean. Oh wow. And then we're also gonna throw this in there Let's for some in. flavor salt. All right, so just kind of let that simmer. It might take a bit. Okay. Incorporate that all together. Beautiful mixture. Pour a little bit of this in here. Pour like two of those. Good. We just wanted to warm up this egg mixture so that when we put the egg mixture into this hot water, it doesn't automatically um, scramble oh, the yeah. eggs. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna add this. It's ready to add in here, make sure you're whisking, whisking, whisking. We turn this mixture on medium heat. Okay, I'm gonna continue mixing for about three minutes. Yeah. All right, so I can already feel it thickening. It looks clumpy, which is freaking me out. No, it's supposed to be. That's, that's what's happening. I don't like this part. I think this part is unnecessary. Uh, I just feel like this step, all it is, is just like losing some cream on a sieve. It was tragic, we lost cream. Now we're adding some cold butter. It's good that it's cold butter because one, it'll stop the pastry cream from continuing to cook. And two, we're adding butter because it tastes good. And three, we're adding butter because it will help this cream set once it's cool. So I think the butter is all incorporated. We're gonna put a cling wrap over it so it doesn't get that film because what we'll, that film would just be another waste of waste of cream ingredients. Okay, so we're gonna put this in the fridge for four hours. Some of the ingredients that you're going to need for the compote are cherries, obviously. Yep. Pitted. Some lemon juice and lemon zest, sugar, cornstarch, and kirsch, rum, or brandy. We don't know if we got the right thing. We said, what's that? We didn't look that hard, but this is what we found, and we're hoping that this is okay. This is a cherry liquor. So, we'll see. Now it's time to make the cherry compote. Cherry compote. Cherry Truman compote. Stir, like a little bit, just kind of get the sugars, you know, involved. Let's stir that in. We've got our mixture. Ooh. Now we want to make sure that we have one and a quarter cups. So I made a line on a glass jar. If it's over a cup and a fourth, then we haven't reduced it enough. It looks like we have a cup. Oh, we reduced it too much. But that's good. She said a little less is okay. Mm, uh, babe, this is good. Is it good? It's very lemony. Now, now we have to put this in the fridge. Uh, you want to cover it, but since it's an old peanut butter jar, Wait, are you sure it's not gonna explode? So now we're going to get the sand mixer out and make the dough. Oh, that's the best part. You need flour, salt, sugar, unsalted butter, baking powder, egg yolk and eggs, and almond extract, and then of course a tart pan. So first we mix the, the dry ingredients. All-purpose flour, not bread flour. All-purpose flour. Boop. The baking powder. Boop. Salt. We are mixing and fixing. fixing. We're gonna set this aside. 
Now we're gonna do the wet ingredients. Yeah. It's creaming nicely. It's creaming nicely. Okay, the butter is creaming nicely. So we're that's one add third. Our sugar. We do this for about four minutes, scraping down when needed. Sugar butter paste is what I call this. I mean, you can just really stop here. Just eat this. You know? If you were my brother, you would do that. He loves sugar butter paste. My brother used to put equal on craft uh, slices of cheese. He lives in Florida now. One egg yolk. One egg yolk. Boop. Now we're gonna add one uh, egg. We're gonna add our almond extract. I don't know how much I like almond extract, but I do want to make this recipe kind of how you're supposed to make it. That is a strong smell. I spilled a lot. Slowly add our wet ingredients. The dry ingredients. Dry ingredients about half. To knead the dough inside the bowl. You knead this? This so. feels like almost like a batter. Here, so as you, as you all can see, um, the instructions say to knead this in the bowl, but it's basically like- You can like, knead it with the, this thing. It's maybe. like cookie dough. So I do taste that almond extract and I'm not sure how much I love it. Almond extract to me tastes like grown-ups and like nasty desserts, marzipan. But this isn't bad. Form this into a half inch disc. The larger one is gonna be the bottom and edges. So the smaller one will be the top. The same size. Hold on, show our audience. This uh, one is slightly larger. I told Brian that we needed more in this one. He said, no, no. Okay, you have the same size. You're supposed to have one be larger than the other. That's fine, it's not a big deal. I don't care. Now we're gonna let these- it Sounds like she cares. I care a little bit, because I was right. And that's important to know. So we'll see ya when everything is cooled off. We buttered the pan and lightly floured it. Yeah. Okay, so now Brian's going to get the larger disc of crust out of the fridge. The larger, the larger disc, one. babe. The larger disc. Yeah. Babe, these are the same size. This is the larger one, obviously. Okay, okay so we're going to divide it in half. Yeah. So this half will be for the bottom. Yeah. This half, you divide into Four. six pieces. So we're making the sides first. Yeah. And you really don't want the dough to get too warm. Too so warm. we're working quick. Like so? Oh yeah, I guess so. That looks great. So, the book said, you know, make, when we made these two discs, it said make one slightly bigger than the other one. I would say make one bigger than the other one. I feel like she made that pretty clear. I thought it was like slightly. Well, when you see that you need it for the edges, and the bottom, you should kind of put See, see, you're yelling at me and it gets me all worked up. Flip, flip, flip Philadelphia. All right, it flips pretty easily. Yeah. There's really no way to know when we've gotten to 10 inches. It's gotta overhang the top, remember? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna let both of those things chill for a few more minutes, and then we'll be right back. And we're back. <laughs> Turn the oven on to 350. I went ahead and lined a rim baking sheet with foil. We whisked a whole egg together because we're gonna brush the top with that. Yeah. Now let's get our items out. Okay. okay, so we have our cherry compote. It's nice and cool. We have our tart crust. It's nice and cool. Nice and even. Okay. Get all the goodness on the sides and the middle. So when this comes out of the fridge, it is going to be very stiff. So you need to kind of loosen it up. I know it looks weird. I know it looks weird. Bear with me, guys. All right. God. It's not gonna be easy to get up. This is gonna be very hard to smooth over the top of those cherries. Am I doing this? Go ahead. Just a, you know, dollop here, dollop there, and then it's, just spread it with this. It's a dollop there. Press from the middle no, no. out as to not get any air bubbles trapped in here. Looks beautiful. And then you just simply do this, right? Okay, so we're going for it. We're going for it. Oh, yeah. So now let's wash it with this egg. Beautiful. I'll get a, I'll get a fork. Please, please get a fork. Hey, maybe you can make a heart shape. No. 
Oh, yeah. Valentine's Day. Okay, does that look like I coated all of it? Oh, yeah. Cute! Look, we made a heart for Valentine's Day. The heart ruined it. The heart looks silly, though. Alright, anyway, we're gonna make this chill it. <laughs> we're gonna let that sit in the fridge for 20 minutes, and we'll be right back! And we're back! Yeah. Our chilled tart, all ready to go. I don't know if y'all can see that beautiful heart, but it's there. I'm adding these because I want to taste them. Okay. We put this in the oven for 45 to 55 minutes or until the top is shiny and deeply golden, she says. Mm, deeply she likes to use that uh, descriptor. And then middle rack. And we're back. Yeah. We put the tart in. <laughs> we put the tart in for 40 minutes and at 40 minutes it still looked like it needed more time. So I put it in for five more minutes and it looks, it doesn't look deeply golden. But the sides, the look, sides look great. Deep. We're gonna put it in for two more minutes. Okay. So I think that's a little bit more golden. I guess up. so, yeah. I, I think that's fine. I mean, it looks fine. It looks nice. It looks really nice. So we're gonna let this cool out here, and then we're gonna put it in the fridge and just let it cool overnight and have this, what's it called again? Gasto Bosque. Gato Bosque. Yes. We'll see you in the morning. We'll see you in the morning. It's been a whole yeah, day. We waited. I was sure that we were going to eat some of this last night. We maintained discipline and did not eat this we last night. We maintained discipline. We're but. really good at that. <laughs> we need a bowl. We'll just. Oh. That seems see. smart. <laughs> Nothing's happening. <laughs> This is crazy. She didn't say, <laughs> I don't know how to take this off. I'm consulting the manual. <laughs> it's coming. Oh, okay. That was pretty anticlimactic. We did it. I did see more pictures online of these things, of the Gato Basque, and ours looks a little pale compared to the ones I've seen online. It's not like raw. It's just not as deeply brown as I think she would want it. Not as golden. Oh. Oh, yeah. You can see these beautiful layers. We got the cherry compo, we got the pastry cream, we got the crust. You got 28 hours of uh, oh my gosh, work. <laughs> this took forever. <laughs> mm, wow. I really do love it. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. This is absurdly this good. This is really good. Mm. I'm gonna taste this crust that's dark, that's more of a gold. Oh yeah, that's probably. Mm. Yeah, I like the crust dark. dark. All right, so if we were to do this again, we would, we would make the bake uh, it a little longer. Bake it a little bit longer. But oh my god, that's good. It's fantastic, and it was actually kind of fun to make. It was just some of the things were a little tricky. Yesterday I said it wasn't fun to make with someone because it was too much tedious work. This actually recipe kind of sucks to make with people. I don't. I didn't really. <laughs> That's not true, this was fun to make. It was so many steps, after each step, then chill, and then chill, and then chill. I feel like yesterday, that's all we did. Yeah. Thanks for watching, and if you like this recipe, check out Claire's book. Oh, and if you can get a signed copy. <laughs> get a signed copy. Gato Basque. Gato Basque. Yeah, one, two. We <laughs> make good. <laughs> We made <laughs> <laughs>